What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. It is time yet again for another episode of the Never Seen It series, Spooky Edition. If you are new here and you enjoy content like this, hit that red subscribe down below so you don't miss anything in the future. Now I started this series when the movie theater shut down and everything started with the phenomenon and I decided to start watching those movies that have been sitting on my shelf that I've never seen before. So this month being October, I've committed to watching a spooky or a scary movie or a Halloween themed movie every single night for the entire month. And I do have to say, I've not been a horror fan my entire life, but I am trying to broaden my horizons and open up my mindset to other genres. So the horror genre is brand new to me and I've seen a lot, a lot of brand new. This is what we've got. This is what we got right here. We got a lot of movies to go through. Let's stop wasting time. Let's start. Okay. First up is The Lost Boys. I enjoyed this one. I'm actually surprised that I have never seen it because this did come out during my childhood. So you would have figured I would have seen it at some point. But no, it was not bad. I wasn't blown away by it. I got to be honest. It is worth, you know, a couple rewatches. But I expected more from it. I guess I was kind of let down with the vampire factor. I wanted a little bit more blood and gore. But Kiefer Sutherland as the head of the vampires, that, you know, that makes up for everything. But I was just a little underwhelmed by it. My favorite performance was Corey Haim. Absolutely. I just thought he was great in that part. And... R.I.P. Corey Haim. Really, seriously. But I enjoyed that one, but a little underwhelmed. Next up, Gremlins! It's not the goriest movie by any means, but it is Halloween themed. And even though I have seen this a really, really long time ago, any movie that I haven't seen for probably 20 plus years, I just put in never seen it because I'm watching it with a fresh pair of eyes 20 years later. So Gremlins, it was a fun rewatch. I was actually scared of them when I was younger. Watching it now, no, obviously not. It's a fun watch. I forgot how cute Gizmo was, and I had a great time with it. It's it's entertaining, and I actually forgot that Steven Spielberg ha was involved and produced it, so you gotta love Gremlins. You just gotta love Gremlins, but dare I watch Gremlins too? Let me know down below in the comments. I don't have it. I would have to get it. All right, next up, Friday the 13th. I liked it. I did enjoy this one. It is severely campy. No pun intended because they are at a camp. But this movie is so campy. But this movie proves how much you can do with literally no budget. No budget, barely a script, and you can make a movie that becomes a phenomenon and it becomes iconic and the best part is Jason's not even in it until the very end you think it's someone and then they fool you and it's somebody else so that was amazing I enjoyed that twist even though I kind of already knew about it because obviously I've seen Scream so I wasn't completely ignorant of the fact of who the real killer was in Friday the 13th but I enjoyed it all right Psycho, original Psycho, 60 year anniversary edition Psycho. I loved this movie. I cannot even believe I have never seen it before now. This movie shows how much you can do without showing too much. Honestly, that shower scene is scary. It's frightening but they're not showing anything. And I believe that's what Hitchcock was known for. He wanted you to use your imagination. And that is the reason why he shot the movie in black and white was because any blood he thought would be too graphic or gory in color. So that's why he wanted to do it in black and white. <sighs> Amazing. This movie is so like the first half you're kind of sitting there thinking like, where is this going? Why all of a sudden is is Marion, I think her name's Marion, why all of a sudden is Marion turning into a thief and running away? <laughs> you know, you're kind of wondering, mm, where is this going? But obviously I knew what this movie eventually was going to be. And then once Anthony Perkins came onto the screen, 
the movie elevated itself automatically and he just brought that creep factor but it was like suave creep it wasn't like ooh, it's like okay you're kind of weird you're kind of odd i can't really put my finger on what's wrong with you i want to like you but you're creeping me out he gave that kind of vibe so good excellent all right the gift now this is not a traditional horror movie by any means but i gotta say i was impressed with this and this was a buy at big lots i think for three dollars so worth it so worth it i loved jason bateman actually playing like a nasty character because he doesn't do that he's always the nice guy or the funny best friend or or someone like that. He's never like the bully or the mean guy. And in this movie, he is. He takes you on this trip of, you think the movie is going somewhere with, um, oh, what's his name? Joel Edgerton? Yes. Joel Edgerton wrote and directed this, I believe. Yes. Joel Edgerton, I'm sorry, wrote and directed this. And you think this movie is going so so in this direction with his character, but then you find out stuff about Jason Bateman's character. If you have not seen this, there's a million copies at every big lots in the country. Go and pick it up because it is worth it. It's so twisted in the head. It's so twisted. It's good. Okay. This is the one I watched last night. Cabin in the Woods. I gotta say, I've been wanting to see this one. It's got Chris Hemsworth. There's the Marvel connection. So, but besides that, I really did enjoy the concept of this. Now, this was written by Joss Whedon and someone else. And the someone else is um, someone Joss Whedon collaborated with on Buffy. So they have the same like vibe of writing and directing. But I gotta say, I expected more. I expected a little bit more. Like the Lost Boys, I was kind of underwhelmed with this movie. I like the basic concept. Five people going to a cabin and freaky shit happens. Okay, I'm down with that concept. What I did not like about this movie was the very, very end where you find out why they're doing what they're doing. The reasoning why is the stupidest reason on the planet. And the surprise cameo at the end, I was like, where did you come from? Like, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. To me, with horror or thriller movies, keep it simple. Keep it in the now. Don't dredge up these theories that are so weird and outlandish they could never happen in real life. Because to me, with this ending, it didn't really work. It did not really work. And I wanted it to work. I really did. I was positive about it. And then that reveal happened and we just swoop down. All right. Okay. Let's get to these two. Rob Zombie's Halloween. And I have the sequel coming up next. All right. So let's talk about this one. The first one. Surprisingly enough, I did not mind this movie because as everyone knows on my channel, or if you don't know, I'm not a big fan of remaking movies that should never be touched. Halloween, John Carpenter's Halloween, should fall into that category. However, with this movie, I didn't hate it. I didn't. I actually kind of enjoyed it. I loved Tyler, I think that's his name, Tyler Maine's performance as Michael Myers. I enjoyed it. I thought that was a great performance. A lot of people complain about his height factor, but I kind of enjoyed that because he's more brooding and overwhelming as a character so I didn't mind that a lot of people complain that Rob Zombie delved way too much into Michael Myers backstory and we don't need all that ex explanation I didn't mind it the only thing that I did mind with this was the very graphic rape scene I did not think that was necessary at all that was put in for shock value like I when that was happening, I had to go like this because I just, you didn't need it. You didn't have to put that in there. I was not a fan of that. So this one, I did not mind. This one, on the other hand, 
is probably one of the worst movies I have ever seen in my entire life. Doesn't matter what genre it is, it's up there as the worst. I was looking forward to watching the sequel because when I watched the first one, I was surprisingly enjoying myself. So I had high hopes for this one. No. If you guys have never seen this, don't bother and don't waste your time because Halloween 2, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, is a piece of hot, stinking garbage. First of all, you have Michael Myers wandering around, not even in his outfit, not even wearing the mask. He only puts on the mask sometimes if he's killing someone. No, no, no. He needs to be in the jumpsuit. He needs to be wearing the mask with the knife. Like, you, you don't mess with that. That's like tradition. You don't mess with that. And then Laurie Strode, the character of Laurie Strode, was turned into a Rob Zombie-looking brat. I hated her character in, in part two. I just thought she was so ungrateful to her friend because after the events of the first one, she's now living with her friend Annie and her father, who is the sheriff, because Michael Myers killed her parents and she had nowhere else to go. And... She's just a bitch. She's a bitch to Annie. She's a bitch to everyone. I understand she survived a very traumatic thing. I get it. It's called PTSD. I totally understand. But I was not rooting for her character whatsoever. I hated her character. And as the final girl in a horror movie, you should not hate them. You want them to live. You want them to survive to tell the tale. And in Halloween 2... I wanted her to bite the dust. I really did. I was hoping Michael was going to kill her. And the final thing that was just completely outlandish was this whole white horse situation. White horse. What is with a white horse? I believe Rob Zombie created this whole white horse ghost mom situation just to put his wife back in the movie. Simple and done. So when it comes to Halloween 2, never, probably never watching that again. I will never waste my time. It is hot stinking garbage. Okay, let's move on as I have tirated on that enough. Shaun of the Dead. Loved it. Loved it. Had a wonderful time. I'm not a big fan of zombie stuff, but this was funny. Simon Pegg, genius. Genius with this. Every, every note that he hit in this movie, I was laughing. It's a great supporting cast. I know it's not that exciting to look at. My steelbook, it's a little lame. But if you guys have not watched Shaun of the Dead, you do not know what you are missing. Please go and watch it. You could pick it up for fairly cheap if you find it out there. All right. Misery. Classic Misery, Kathy Bates' Oscar-winning performance. Loved it. Lo I, I just love me some psychoness and some craziness. And Kathy Bates delivers that in spades. Oh my gosh. The chemistry with her and James Caan, the love, the hate. Oh, it was so juicy. It was so good. I was surprised it was directed by Rob Reiner. I could not believe it. He's known for you know, a little more wholesome things and not so much horror movies. Granted, this isn't really a horror movie. I would classify this more as a thriller because there isn't really anything gory. Sorry. There really isn't anything gory except for the hobbling scene. And that one I knew was coming. I just went like this and it was done in two seconds. But Misery, Highly, highly enjoyable. I had a great time. I will rewatch this in the future. And my final entry of Never Seen It is Child's Play. Now, I think we obviously know why I have never seen this. I am not a fan of dolls coming to life and killing you. I am not a fan of the concept of clowns and all that. And this is kind of a combination of those two a little bit. But I gotta say, watching it this late in my life, I'm 40 years old, I was laughing. Like, it was funny. <laughs> it was funny when Chucky was killing people and coming to life and the mom is holding him up in the air and he, like, called her all these nasty names and was swearing. I was laughing my ass off. So this was actually funny and very enjoyable. All right, guys, that is everything for Never Seen It. Thank you so much for joining me for 
the spooky edition of Never Seen It series. Let me know what movies you have been watching this month for October. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.